problem session 1 and in each problem session I will circulate a set of problems 8 to 10 problems. We will not have time to work out all of them so I will work out selected ones the rest of them uh, I would expect that each of you will work out and <coughs> Most of the problems I have solved myself, so solutions are available, but I won't give you the solutions till I see uh, you yourself working out the problems. And these are the Tuesdays and Fridays that I shall be available. You can come and check the solutions, you can come and discuss the solutions and so on and so forth. Okay. We will start with um, 5.1 and 5.2 I have already done in the lecture class. So, we start with 5.3. The problem is a network is given like this E the switch S is thrown out at T equal to 0. That is it was closed earlier it has been opened now and then you have a resistance and inductance L another resistance R and a capacitance C. This is the network this current is I 2 and this current is I 1 all right. The switch was initially on and it has reached a steady state and the switch is opened at T equal to 0 it is thrown out. Determine the initial conditions for the currents I 1 T and I 2 T that is I 1 0 plus and I 2 0 plus you have to find out this and their derivatives that means I 1 prime 0 plus and I 1 prime I 2 prime 0 plus these are the four quantities to be found out from the equation from the from the network. Now obviously before the switch is thrown open the conditions have reached steady state and therefore I 1 0 minus and I 2 0 minus can be found out from physical inspection of the circuit. Okay. At T equal to 0 minus <coughs> the inductor will act as a short circuit and the capacitor will act as an open circuit and therefore if this is short circuit then obviously I 1 of 0 plus I 1 of 0 minus would be equal to E divided by R is that clear from physical considerations and I 2 of 0 minus because the capacitor is open it has to be 0 all right. Now regarding the primes regarding the primes what you have to do is you have to find out the circuit at T greater than equal to 0 plus let us look at the circuit t greater than equal to 0 plus there is this voltage source E and then the switch has been thrown open all right. Then a resistance R and inductance L this is I 1 and then another resistance R and a capacitance C and this is I 2. Obviously t greater than equal to 0 plus because the switch is opened I 1 of T would be identically equal to 0 because of open circuit. If I 1 of T is identically equal to 0 what can be I 1 prime of T obviously that is also 0 because it is a constant all right. So that that is no problem however I 2 0 plus I 2 0 plus would be found out from considerations of continuity of current in an inductor. You see the, the current in this inductor L has to be continuous from 0 minus to 0 plus. Now therefore I 2 0 plus would be equal to minus you see I 1 and I 2 are in opposite direction. So minus I 1 0 minus and we know what this is minus E by R. Is this point clear? Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, as far as we will not be adding plus I2 0 minus. 
Pardon me? Sir, I, we should also write I2 0 plus. Yes, this is what you have written, I2 0. No, I2 0 minus, we have already said it is 0. In case it is not 0, then we would have written. Then we would have had something else, yes. You see, because it is a short circuit at t equal to 0 minus, so the current through the inductor at 0 plus, which is in this direction from bottom to up, is the negative of I1 and therefore it is minus I1 of 0 minus equal to minus E by R. The other part of the equation, other part of the of the problem namely uh, to find out I2 prime 0 plus, we shall have to write the differential equation. We shall have to write the differential equation for this mesh. Let us see what the differential equation is. It is R I2 plus R I2 plus 1 over C integral I2 tau d tau plus V sub C 0 minus okay. then plus L d I2 dt that should be equal to 0. Is that clear? at t greater than or equal to 0 plus this current is 0 and therefore I have only one mesh R i 2 plus the drop in C which is 1 by C integral i 2 d t plus V C 0 minus plus the drop in L which is simply L d i 2 d t. Okay. So, if I put in this equation t equal to 0 plus V C 0 minus is 0. zero. Okay. And this would be from 0 minus to t. If I put t equal to 0 plus, then obviously this will also be equal to 0. Okay. This is also 0 for t equal to 0 plus. <coughs> and therefore, all I have is d i 2 d t at t equal to 0 plus would be equal to minus r divided by L i 2 of 0 plus and I2 of 0 plus we have already found out to be equal to minus e by, e by r and therefore it would be simply E by L. Is that okay? Yes. V C 0 minus is 0. Okay. That is a good question. Steady state this is a short circuit and therefore I2 is identically 0. C cannot be charged. Okay. See for charging of C there is required a current, but since L is identically equal to 0, no voltage can be supported from this point to this point. So, to, start with that, uh, to start with is a different story. That is at t equal to minus infinity, the battery char starts charging. Okay. But in the steady state, when steady state is reached, even if the capacitor had acquired a charge, it would have discharged, because it finds a very easy path here, short circuit. Okay. Well, what we are considering is the steady state condition. All right. Okay, that takes care of uh, five point three. Next, we consider five point four. Five point four. The problem in 5.4 is the following. The network is this. Let me draw it 10 volt. I will draw a simplified diagram. I do not want to draw many lines for battery. There is a switch which moves from A to B. That means it was like this, then it moves in this direction T equal to 0. At T equal to 0, the switch S moves from A to B and there is a voltage source 5 volt here. Then we have a 1 Henry inductor, the current through this is I L T. We have a 1 farad capacitor, the voltage here is V sub C T and it is shunted by a resistance of 1 ohm. This is the circuit. The circuit <coughs> has reached steady state in the position A 
and then at t equal to 0 it, it is the switch is moved <coughs> to position B. Determine the initial conditions for I L T and V C T that is you have to find out I L 0 minus V C 0 minus and their first derivatives that is I L prime 0 plus well obviously I L 0 minus would be the same as I L 0 plus by initial conditions we mean conditions at t equal to 0 plus because there are no impulses they would be the same. So write down I L 0 plus and this is also equal to V C 0 plus what you have to find out is I L prime 0 plus and V C prime 0 plus and also the final values that is I L infinity and V sub C infinity. Okay. Let us look at the circuit carefully. <coughs> First is when the circuit reaches steady state at position A, the inductor is a short circuit, the capacitor is an open circuit and therefore I L 0 minus or I L 0 plus can be written down by inspection and this would be 5 amperes, 5 volt, this is short, this is open 5 volt across 1 ohm and therefore the current must be 5 ampere and since this is a short V sub C 0 minus would also be equal to 5 volt. Is this clear? Okay. Now to find out the derivatives, <coughs> to find out the derivatives we have to find out the conditions at t equal to 0 plus. At t equal to 0 plus the circuit is this the battery now comes as 10 volt then you have the inductor 1 Henry this current is I L T then you have the capacitor 1 farad this voltage is V sub C of T and then you have the 1 ohm resistance. Okay. This is the condition at T greater than equal to 0 plus. All right. Now let us write to find out the derivatives of I L and V C at t equal to 0 plus let us write a couple of equations. All right. First you notice that <coughs> for this loop, for this loop now in, in, in the matter of calculation of initial conditions a bit of ingenuity and there is no blind mechanical rule. In fact electrical engineering uh, is quite different from mechanical engineering. Uh, there is nothing much of mechanical here. You have to apply your, your ingenuity and your intelligence. Now in writing this equation you see we write 10 the driving source equal to 1 Henry then d i l d t you see d i l d t has come in the equation you have to seek those equations which give you the desired quantity d i l d t plus now this voltage I will simply write as V sub C alright simply as V sub C I will, I will not write in terms of the element equation alright then I put T equal to 0 plus obviously D I L D T 0 plus would be equal to 10 minus V C 0 plus now V C 0 minus was 5 volt therefore V C 0 plus is also 5 volt and therefore this would be 10 minus 5 and the quantity is 5 the the unit would be amperes per what about the second in the oh we do not care because this potential we are writing KVL that is the ingenuity you see we are writing KVL so this the driving source is equal to this drop drop across 1 Henry plus drop across 1 farad fine and the drop across 1 farad is VCT we do not care what the current is all right then that, that takes care of DIL DT. Now we have to find out DVC DT. Obviously, if we, if we want to find out DVC DT, we have to take care of the currents because C DVC DT is the current and therefore what we do is we write a node equation here. All right. If we write a node equation here, let me write in a different color. You see the current is minus ILT, the current going out plus 1 farad dvc dt okay plus 
V sub C by 1 ohm this current the sum of these three currents shall be equal to 0 agreed and therefore in this equation you have to write that equation you see we are not writing loop equations or mesh equation both of them no we are writing one mesh equation and one mode equation because that is what gives us the desired quantity and therefore dvc dt at 0 plus would be equal to I L 0 plus minus V C 0 plus and V C by 1 V C by 1 ohm that is why it is V C. Of course, it, this also looks uh, ridiculous is not it a, car, a voltage is being subtracted <coughs> from a current, but the suppressed factor is a 1 ohm division by 1 ohm. So, actually we are differencing uh, two currents all right. So, and this as you see I L 0 plus is 5 numerically V C 0 plus is 5. So, this is 0 volts per second all right the quantities have been found out. Finally, finally what you have to find out is I L of infinity and V sub C of infinity. Obviously, I L of infinity would be pardon me? This, this part ok I will, I will repeat this. <coughs> what I wrote was I want to write a node equation here. The current going out through the inductor is minus I L that is what I write here. Then the current that goes out through 1 farad capacitor is C which is 1 d V C D T C D V C D T and the current that goes out through the 1 ohm resistance is simply V C by 1 so V C the sum of these three currents equal to 0 and then I say d v c d t at t equal to 0 plus is I take this quantity and this quantity to the right hand side and substitute their values all right ok. As far as infinite time value is concerned when this this circuit reaches steady state once again the inductor becomes short the capacitor becomes open and therefore the current through this circuit would be 10 volt by 1 ohm so it would be 10 amperes you see what has happened initially initial condition was 5 ampere il plus il 0 plus so from 5 amperes it rises to 10 amperes obviously exponentially determined by the time constant of the circuit and vc infinity after the infinity <coughs> is again it's equal to 10 volts it started from 5 volt now it has risen to 10 volts and that is the total solution of the problem. You see a bit of a bit of thinking is needed it is not routine it is not mechanical that you write this and and solve this and so on. In the solution also you have to find a simpler way was there a question no. The next problem that is solved we will skip now <coughs> one problem at least next problem we will solve is 5.6 on the other side the remaining ones are to be done by you 5.6 the problem is this this is an interesting problem there is an excitation of I U T that is a current source is switched on to a parallel combination of a G G is a conductance and an L the current through L is I L and this voltage is V of T this is the circuit given and for the network shown it is given <coughs> the initial conditions are that I L 0 minus is equal to 0 ok and what you have to find out is V T for 0 minus to infinity this is part A this is to be found out. Second you have to show that V t approaches delta t as g tends to 0 as the conductance tends to 0 which means the resistance becomes infinite you have to show that the voltage appearing across V t uh, tends to delta t and unit impulse and then find the not unit some k 
part C is find K, the strength of the impulse, that is the question. Now <coughs> we can solve it by differential equations, but it would be easier to solve it by Laplace transform. Why? Because there is no problem of initial conditions. Even if initial conditions are there, Laplace transform can be used, but the situation will dictate to you what should be used, whether time domain or frequency domain. Okay. If you use the time domain, then you see V of S, let us take Laplace transform, V of S that is the Laplace of V t shall be equal to the current multiplied by the impedance. The current has a transform I by S, alright, I u t, the Laplace transform is I by S multiplied by impedance which is simply reciprocal of admittance and the admittance is because of a parallel combination G plus S L alright and therefore V of S is equal to I <coughs> divided by S L S plus G by L is that okay alright this is V of S and therefore let me repeat it V of S equal to I by L 1 over S, S plus G by L, was this a step function? Yes, okay. <coughs> Which I can write as uh, have I made a mistake? We can't add G and S L. Pardon me? Yes. Why didn't you tell me earlier? 1 upon S L. Okay. Therefore, it would be, um, let me simplify this. This would be I by S S L 1 plus S L G okay all right therefore V of S is equal to this S and S cancels S and S cancels okay so I get I times L I times L divided by let me take L G common then I get S plus 1 over L G all right s plus 1 over lg this is equal to i divided by g which is simply ir okay capital g is the reciprocal of the resistance divided by s plus r by l and therefore i can take the laplace inverse of this to get v of t as ir then e to the minus R T by L. This is not complete, we must write multiplied by U of T. This is the voltage solution and you can see <coughs> that the voltage starts from I R and decays with time, alright. You also know, is there any question up to this point? No. Do not allow me to make a mistake. You also know that uh, <coughs> the time constant of the circuit is the time required for the voltage to drop to 1 by eth of its value at t equal to 0 and therefore the time constant of the circuit is simply L by R. So this is L by R and this value is I R divided by E alright this is the time constant. Now part B, part B says show that the voltage response approaches an impulse as capital G tends to infinity that is I am sorry 0 that is capital R tends to infinity. Now you see that if capital R increases the height at T equal to 0 increases and capital T which is L by R decreases and therefore 
with variation of g the situation would be like this. If I plot v t versus t this may be for one time constant if the time constant is increased or decreased decreased capital G decreases means time constant decreases then the curve would be like this all right. If we further uh, if we further increase capital R that is if we further decrease capital G maybe the curve is like this and obviously as capital G tends to 0 capital G tends to 0 V of t tends to an impulse function k delta t. This is from physical reasoning. To establish it on a sound basis on analytical reasoning what we do is we take part c part c if we integrate v t from 0 to infinity all right if we integrate this then you uh, use the expression and integrate you can show that this expression is simply i times l i have carried out the integration here this expression is simply i times l now what does it show it shows that as capital g varies the area under the curve remains the same and that is the property of a delta function a delta function uh, the area under the curve remains the same but the duration keeps on decreasing and decreasing duration we define here by the by the time constant capital t as capital t goes to zero obviously the uh, the uh, curve tends to an impulse function whose strength instead of unity it is i times l so that answers part c and also strengthens the physical argument given in part b that is what you have shown at t equal to 0 because the time constant is 0 capital T is 0 so in 0 time it falls to 1 by e f of its value in 0 time it falls to 0 at 0 of its value also but then none, there is nothing sacred about 1 by e it could be 1 by 100 it could be 1 by 200 or it could be 1 by infinity even then but I agree it is still a physical argument. Okay, the so physical so argument. Can we establish this fact uh, from the formula of Vt, from the expression that we have obtained for Vt? Can we establish this fact from the expression? Yes, this is what I am going to tell you. Too. Yes, this is precisely what. I, no, first let me take the physical situation. In the physical situation, as capital G, as capital G tends to zero, all right, it becomes an open circuit. So what you are doing is you are you, you are applying a unit a step open circuit capital G equal to 0 is R equal to infinity so it becomes an open circuit. Now I L of 0 minus is 0 and therefore initially when you apply the unit step it is an open circuit on the other hand unit step stabilizes immediately okay. So what happens is this current capital I is being forced into L despite the fact that it tries to resist and this is a singularity condition that is the step current from 0 it is being forced to become capital I the derivative therefore is a delta function derivative is infinitely large derivative of an unit step is a unit impulse function and therefore the current the voltage which is L d i d t this is small i establishes from 0 to capital I instantaneously and therefore the voltage must be a unit impulse function and this argument can now be extended to the equation and I leave that to you. This physical argument can be translated in terms of a mathematical argument in terms of the equation. The next problem that we solve unless there is a question here the next problem would be 
5.8 I have skipped 5.7 okay 5.8 that is a very interesting problem there is a voltage source V a resistance R and a switch S which goes from the point A to the point B at time t equal to 0 and to B is connected a capacitor C then to S is connected an inductor L this current is I of t this is the circuit and the conditions of the problem are before the switch moves from A to B steady state condition prevailed and therefore I I of 0 minus I of 0 minus is simply equal to V by L agreed. Then you have to find out the current I t obviously for t greater than equal to 0 plus all right. I of 0 minus is V by R how does the current behave when the switch is moved from A to B. Now let us argue physically first physically you see a current V by R is established in L and when the switch moves from A to B all we have is an initial magnetic energy in the inductor. The capacitor is initially uncharged there is no electrostatic energy there is no energy stored in the electric field. Now this current in the inductor this current in the inductor the flux in the inductor will try to decay because it finds a short circuit at t equal to 0 plus capacitor is a short circuit. So this current tries to flow through this and in the process charges the capacitor any current flowing through a capacitor charges the capacitor. So this current will start charging till till the voltage across the capacitor as a result of its charging is the same as the voltage across the inductor you see voltage across the inductor is L D I D T till the two voltages equalize if the voltage is equalized then there should be no current all right and therefore what happens after that the capacitor now it is a steady state the capacitor immediately starts discharging through L and this process continues it is a see saw situation in other words you will get pure oscillation. Now as I told you this part of the circuit is a passive circuit how come it is able to generate oscillations how can it behave like an active well in practice it cannot because an ideal inductor is a dream element so is an ideal capacitor there would be resistances and therefore what you will see in practice is a decaying sinusoid a decaying sinusoid but in theory it can be a pure oscillation. Now let us look at it mathematically. Mathematically <coughs> the current let me write it here because the circuit is here the current I of t at t equal to 0 plus the situation is that the switch has come here. So this part has become invalid at t equal to 0 plus and I of t if this voltage is V if this voltage is V then I of t is equal to minus C dV dt do you understand the meaning of the negative sign why it is so because V is considered positive here and negative here. So the current to the capacitor is in this direction C dV dt is in this direction whereas the current I t has been taken in the opposite direction is that clear you have to be very careful about this sign. So I of t is minus C dV dt now this is minus C d dt of what is V in terms of L it is L di dt and therefore this is L di dt and that does it that gives you the equation I of t equals to minus L C D 2 I D T 2 and it is I that we have to find out therefore what we have is uh, <coughs> L C D 2 I D T 2 
plus i t is equal to 0 all right. Now you can solve this differential equation subject to the condition that i of 0 plus is equal to v by r okay this is a differential this is second order differential equation and therefore 1 0 minus is the same as 0 plus one initial condition does not suffice you also require i prime of 0 plus is not it this is second order differential equation now let us look at this. <coughs> what is i prime of 0 plus physical consideration or mathematical consideration can someone tell me what would be i prime of 0 plus can be exponential no why is it 0 0 is the correct answer but why because no that is not the reason how do you know at 0 plus the current could be rising or uh, falling so the decreasing yes, inductor is same as the rise in the capacitor that so i know how to change through the inductor pardon me so current cannot change through the inductor so 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 current cannot change that is why i0 minus is equal to i0 plus yes so we can have one thing so voltage across the capacitor that is correct that is the clue you see voltage across the capacitor vt is simply equal to l di dt and vt at t equal to 0 plus is 0 and therefore di dt 0 plus must be 0 do you see the argument you must be able to justify okay the justification is at at t equal to 0 plus this is the equation which is valid and v c of 0 plus is equal to 0 and therefore d i l d t at 0 plus must be equal to 0. So, we have two initial conditions now you can solve this all right instead of doing it in the time domain even though initial conditions are there it is instructive to do it in the frequency domain. So, let us take the Laplace of this equation let us take the Laplace of this equation obviously what we get is l c the Laplace of second derivative is s squared i minus s i of 0 plus minus i prime 0 plus do you remember this okay then plus i would be equal to 0 and therefore what we get is <coughs> uh, i s squared l c plus 1 which takes care of this term and this term this is 0 would be equal to l c s and i of 0 plus is v by r. So, that is it that is what it is okay which means which means that capital I would be equal to v l c divided by r s divided by s squared l c plus 1 and I can write this as v l c by r s divided by s squared plus 1 over l c and then you have to multiply by l c this cancels with this. So, it is equal to v by r s divided by s squared plus 1 over l c and then and then and then any table of Laplace transform should show you that under this condition i of t is equal to v by r cosine of square root of this. So, t divided by square root l c multiplied by u t and so there is a co sinusoidal oscillation in this circuit ok. It is instructive to do this because we have we get a chance to review our knowledge of Laplace transform ok. And the second derivative of a Laplace transform it also shows the the how uh, I prime 0 plus has to be determined. So, this uh, problem is is very instructive any question on this finally, we work out 5.9 5.9 is also a peculiar problem 5.9 says 
that you have a resistance R a battery V plus minus an inductor L1 and then an inductor L2 across L2 there is a switch and the switch was initially closed and thrown open at t equal to 0. For the circuit shown the switch S is opened at t equal to 0 after the circuit had been in steady state okay, which means that if this current is I of t then I of 0 minus would be simply equal to V by R. Okay. What you are required to do is to find out I of t for 0 minus less than t less than infinity. You have to find out the current I t. Something peculiar happens. Let us look at it from physical point of view. For an electrical engineer physical concept has no replacement. You can solve differential equations, you can consult Laplace tables, you can find the spectrum by Fourier transform and so on. You can do hundreds of different things. You can write uh, algorithms on the computer, you can simulate equations, you can find uh, however complicated. But there is no replacement for physical concept. Let us look at the physical concept. You say t equal to 0 minus this inductor was shorted. This inductor was shorted and therefore, therefore L1 carried all the current and the magnetic flux was generated by L1 only through L2 the current was 0. At t equal to 0 the switch is open <coughs> and therefore whatever current was flowing through L1 is now being forced to pass through L2 because otherwise the current cannot flow and the current requires, requires a path and therefore this is a case of singularity. This is a case in which the current in L2 has to change instantaneously in order to establish a flux, in order to establish a flux and provide a path, provide a closed path for the current. All right. This is a case of singularity and one has to be extremely careful in solving this problem. So, why not have current change in L1 instead? Current has to change in L1 also. But the instantaneous change. So yes. L1 as well as L2. You will see, you will see how it changes. Okay. The physical situation it should be clear now. Now the question is to find I t for 0 minus less than equal to t less than equal to infinity. Okay. One of the things that I confused you intentionally with is the con question of current through L2 at t equal to 0 minus. Is it really 0? It is 0? Well, at t equal to 0 minus L2 is a short circuit, S is also a short circuit. So, there are two short circuits in parallel. At t equal to 0 minus it is a short circuit because the current has established the steady state. There is no change of current. So, but at times of L2 minus infinity yes. when the switch S was uh, thrown, uh, sorry, it was closed mm -hmm. then there would have been no current in L2. Now, sir, since it has been shorted there will never be any current. All that has been in finite time ago. <laughs> since then sir the current since has been then through the short uh, switch only not through L2 sir. Haan, but L2 also provides a short. So At t equal to 0 minus short only is initially some current goes but ini when the switch initially some current goes. No this is a degenerate situation again because it is being shorted because the switch is being thrown open. It is a degenerate sir, situation. And we do not know at t equal to minus infinity what happened we do not know. We are concerned at t equal to 0 minus when S is closed and V has been there for a very long time. Sir, we can have two situations. 
but since there is a short gets, across L2 the inductance. L2 cannot be a short unless a current flows through it. And yes. since S is already a short, so no current would start flowing in Flow L2. Therefore, L2 the situation open. of it being a short circuit at 0 minus doesn't exist. This current after coming here, when this is short, this is also a short, L2 is also a short. So initially it is an open circuit at T minus so but the very It does not matter. Sir, the current has established. So how it will end? Whatever current will be there, that will be discharged. Who will oppose it? Once the current has established, this has become steady. You agree that the current, steady state current is V by R. Yes, sir. Okay. The current is steady, there is no DIDT. There is no DIDT. So, the voltage across this shall be 0. If the voltage is 0, obviously it is a short circuit. So, it depends when the switch was closed, sir. Switch is closed after T equal to infinity. From minus infinity to 0 minus the duration is infinity. Sir, so, but then how so do you compare how the current case when at T equal to 0, yeah. this is initially or L1 and L2 are relaxed and we have initially L1 and L2 so are not relaxed. Case, uh -huh. And we have thrown the switch such that now this has short, L2 is shorted. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, whenever a, even a slight bit of current it will tend to flow through L2, it will be acting as an open circuit because it will oppose the current and mm -hmm. that current will be tending to flow through the short. This situation will prevail up till infinity. <laughs> and at infinity, this is now the same thing that the current at infinity would be the same as, as here in, at 0. And that is not the, <laughs> so, not the case. So, there is no magnetic energy in L2. Where? In L2. So oh, there will be a magnetic energy. So, this, there is no current passing uh, through it then. Uh, that is what I am not so agreeing with you. Yes, we are assuming that sir, the battery was installed before the switch was closed. Yes. Battery was installed before the switch was yes, closed. Yes. Okay. Look, you see the history is not known. How? battery was, but you were looking at a situation after infinite amount of time. You see after let us say 47 years of independence, you are not concerned with who fought whom and all, you are only concerned with your independence, all right. Who are the people, most of the young generation does not know who are the people for whom you are now with your high head high and all that. So, we do not know the history. What we know is that at t equal to 0 minus the current driven from the battery drawn from the battery is V by R. The current after reaching here finds two short circuits. One is through the switches, L2 is no better than a short circuit because for a steady current L2 cannot develop a voltage across it therefore, it is a short circuit. And if it is a short circuit, identical short circuit, there can be differences between short circuits also. There can be incremental resistances, but these are ideal cases and therefore, the current through L2 is half of V by R and I2 0 minus, no, not I2, just a minute, just a minute, IL2 0 minus is equal to V by 2R. Yes. That means, we can consider the current through L2 depending upon our convenience. No, it is not a convenience. You make a circuit and, no. and allow it. The best test is experimental test. <laughs> Allow it to stand. Why not? This is the ideal situation. No, we have a resistance here. Nothing will burn. You take a battery, connect a resistance and connect two inductors, short one of them and allow the circuit to stabilize. Measure the current through the inductor and through the short circuit. It will be exactly half. So, but the inductor and the short circuits are not resistanceless. Yeah. Uh, there will be slight difference, but that can be attributed to the resistances. So, like so if we have the resistance, mm -hmm. then we can say that half current will flow, that is fine. Mm -hmm. This resistance? No, sir, this, these, these have some resistances. No, me. this is a, uh, as I said, it is a degenerate case, it is an ideal case. Yeah. You take R1 and R2 and allow R1 and R2 both to go to 0, you will see that current will be exactly half. Well, current division? Exactly no, current half. division. R1 by R1 plus R2 and R2 by R1 plus R2, okay. As in the limit, it will be exactly half. This is a degenerate situation and one has to consider that. And that is how flux shall be instantaneously established in L2, not otherwise. Okay. So, the condition, I have a few minutes now, I will allow you to uh, solve the problem yourself, but the condition for finding I of 0 plus would be the principle which you have not utilized so far. What is that principle? Continuity of flux. 
all right flux cannot be increased or decreased instantaneously and therefore what we have is at 0 plus i 0 plus l 1 plus l 2 would be equal to l 1 i l 1 0 plus plus l 2 i l 2 0 plus this would be the condition for finding i l 0 plus and I am sorry i of 0 plus i of 0 plus and your uh, equation at t greater than equal to 0 plus well this is this gives the initial condition of i 0 plus. Sir, yeah. Should we not have 0 minus on the right hand side? Yes. 0 minus on the right hand side. Right hand side. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Zero minus oh yeah, yeah I am sorry I am sorry I beg your pardon yes thank you. You, you here i l 1 0 plus and i l 1 0 minus are not the same is not that right yes. i l 1 0 plus how is it related to i 0 plus identical similarly i l 2 0 plus would be identical to i of 0 plus had i written i l 1 0 plus and i l 2 0 plus here it would have been a himalayan mistake i can afford to do that you cannot all right okay so from here you find i 0 plus then at t greater than equal to 0 plus obviously the equation is i v equal to r i plus l 1 plus l 2 now you can combine the two because d i d t does not involve the initial conditions that is why you can combine the two l 1 plus l 2 d i d t and you solve this equation you solve this equation obviously the solution to this equation without doing anything else you can take Laplace transform and do it or you can do a first order differential equation solution. But in any case the solution would be of the form i equal to some constant k k 1 plus another constant k 2 e to the power minus time constant would be r divided by l 1 plus l 2 times u of t all right from which well k1 can be found out immediately by allowing t to go to infinity if t goes to infinity what is the what is the current again in this circuit i t again v by r okay so we know k1 would be equal to v by r for k2 now you have to put t equal to 0 and find out k2 and then the total solution well i i leave the rest to you okay fine thank you